All right, in this lesson, we're going to go over how to calculate impairment of goodwill when goodwill has to do with a reporting unit. So when we talk about reporting unit, we're talking about when one company decides to acquire another company and they acquire that other company for more than fair value, the rest of that fair value goes to goodwill. So in this calculation and in this video, we're going to look at how do we calculate impairment of goodwill. Now there's two steps to impairment of goodwill. Step number one is we're going to look at the carrying amount of the reporting unit. So when we say carrying amount of the reporting unit, what are we carrying that company on our books, okay? So what are we carrying them? Typically that is fair value at the date of acquisition, um, but what are we carrying them? Book value is, is another word. Um, so we're gonna look at that against the fair value. So what's the fair value of the company itself today? And we have to do a little bit of calculation for that fair value, but if we were to sell that business to another company, what would be that fair value amount? What would that fair value amount B to sell that segment of the business. So we're gonna look at both of those and we're gonna determine if the carrying value of the reporting unit is greater than the fair value of the reporting unit. If it is, that means there may be an impairment to goodwill. We're not looking at any other assets, we're looking at just goodwill. So we're gonna review all of our um, uh, we're going to look at all of our carrying values for that reporting unit and we're going to compare it to what it looks like we could get for it in the market. Okay, And if our carrying value is bigger than the fair value, which means it's, more, it's worth less to the market than we have it on our books, then we might have a possible impairment. Now, if the fair market value is more than the carrying value, which means that we could get more for it than what's reported on our books, then we don't have any impairment because it's worth more than what we have it on, on the books. Okay, So if, if that's the case, then we don't need to go to step two. We can say that the goodwill is not impaired. Okay, So we're looking at it from a big uh, standpoint when it comes to goodwill. Now, if it fails that first test where we say that it's possible impairment because the fair value is less than the, the a carrying value or the book value, then we're gonna to go to step two. And in step two, we're gonna compare goodwill versus this idea of implied goodwill. Okay, so we're gonna calculate this implied goodwill based on the fair market value of the reporting unit. So um, another way that we can think of it is we would assume, let's assume today we're buying that reporting unit again at fair value, what would that goodwill be now because we're calculating it now, okay? And so uh, we can look at uh, FASB Accounting Standards Codification 350-20-35-14 for the definition of implied goodwill. And the definition tells us that the implied fair value of the goodwill shall be determined in the same manner as the amount of goodwill recognized in a business combination. So we're going to calculate this implied goodwill the same way as if we were doing a business combination today of that same reporting unit except for a new fair market value, okay? Um, that is an entity shall assign the fair value of a reporting unit to all of the assets and liabilities of the unit, including any unrecognized intangible assets as if the reporting unit had been acquired in a business combination today. Okay, so that's what we're gonna do is we're gonna calculate this implied goodwill and the decision point is that we look at the implied goodwill. If the implied goodwill is greater than the book value of the goodwill that we carry it at, then we don't have an impairment because we're saying that this new found calculated goodwill is more than what we report it. Well, we never recognize gain and uh, increases in assets uh, value. And so for the, from a conservatism standpoint, we have no impairment. So we're not gonna write up that good uh, goodwill. Now, if the implied goodwill is less than the book value of the goodwill, then there is an impairment. So we're gonna write a loss on the impairment. And the way that we calculate it is we take the implied goodwill, we subtract the book value of goodwill, and that's gonna give us our loss amount. So really we're just trying to write it down from what we have in our books 
to the implied goodwill. So that's the difference here. Okay, so let's go through an example so you can kind of understand that I've made this very, very simple and simplistic. And so let's say that we invested in company A and their tangible assets when we acquired it was $10,000. Their intangibles sit on our books for $7,000. Goodwill sits at $35,000 and we have liability of $6,000. Okay, so that's what we have it as of now. Now, if we look at the fair market value of everything, we notice that the tangible assets, fair market value of those specific assets are $12,000. The intangible assets that they have, those intangible assets that are related to company A is sitting on our books, uh, uh, has a fair value of $5,000. We're not sure about goodwill. We're trying to test it for impairment based on these two steps. And then liability sits at the same, okay? And so, but we do notice that if we were to sell company A in the open open market today, the fair market value is $40,000. So now we're trying to test for goodwill. And the first test is we're going to take the carrying value of the entire entity. So this is the entire entity. Okay. And we're going to compare it to the fair market value of what we can get for the company. Now notice, um, in this case, I've given you the fair market value of the entire company and we're going to try to figure out if there's a goodwill impairment. Okay, So we're only looking, in this case, we're only looking at the fair value of the entire uh, unit and then we're looking at the carrying amount. So in this case, we'll start with the carrying value. The carrying value that we have um, on this is 10 plus 7 plus 35 minus 6 gets us $46,000. And then our fair market value of the reporting unit, well, the fair market value, if we were to sell this unit out in the open market, we would get $40,000 for this company. Now, if we put all of our uh, less than or greater than signs, we'll notice that their carrying value is greater than the fair market value. And because of that, uh, there is a possible impairment. Because there's a possible impairment, we're going to go on to step two and figure out that implied goodwill. Now, the way that we calculate implied goodwill is we take all of the tangible and intangible assets, including liabilities, add them together, compare that with our fair market value to come up with a goodwill amount or an implied goodwill. So if we took 12 plus 5, we would get 17, and then we would subtract 6, we would get $11,000. Now, when we calculate implied goodwill, we don't consider goodwill. Okay, so we take all of the other assets and liabilities, net them together to get an amount, in this case, $11,000. Then what we do is we subtract our fair market value. So if we were to acquire this company today, we would acquire it for $40,000. So we would compare it with, uh, sorry, we would subtract $40,000 and notice that we get 29,000. That 29,000 is our implied goodwill. We're implying that goodwill is $29,000 today. Okay, so let's do this um, here as a decision point. So implied goodwill was 29,000 that we calculated. And we notice that goodwill sits on our books for $35,000. We put in our less than or greater than equal signs and we notice that our implied goodwill is less than our actual book value goodwill and therefore there is an impairment and because there is an impairment, we now need to write down a loss for the impairment. We don't want our goodwill sitting on our books for $35,000 when it's only worth $29,000. So if we take the subtraction, implied goodwill of $35,000, subtract book value, sorry, implied goodwill, 29, and then our book value goodwill, 35, we get $6,000 impairment loss, okay? Now the journal entry on this impairment loss would be a debit to loss on goodwill impairment for $6,000 and then good, credit goodwill of $6,000. So we're trying to reduce the actual intangible asset, in this case, goodwill. So goodwill now will sit in our books for $29,000 instead of $35,000 because of this entry. Couple things to note. Um, first thing is we notice that we have intangible sitting on our books for five thousand and the fair value. Sorry, seven thousand and then the fair value five. So we will need to do an intangible asset uh, impairment test just on that, but that it's not part of this right here.
okay? So we're gonna do the goodwill impairment, but we're not gonna consider this um, difference here, okay? We'll do our own impairment test for that to make sure um, that we need to either write that down or not, depending on if this is a long-lived asset, uh, intangible asset, or if this is a finite asset. Uh, finite intangible asset, okay? Um, so that's something to think about. The other thing to think about is you could have a situation where this occurs, where there is a possible impairment, but because of the implied goodwill and book value, there would be no impairment. So make sure that you do both steps as you go through it to make sure that you have an impairment on a reporting unit. So again, we're talking about reporting units. We're not talking about individual assets. So we're not looking at individual assets. We're looking at the reporting unit. When we talk about reporting unit, we mean corporation. So if we're buying a business or a corporation, that's the reporting unit, a separate identifiable reporting unit unit. Okay. So hopefully this helps you get through one of your problems. Uh, as we talk about goodwill, goodwill impairment as it has to do with an actual reporting unit.